This is the Cambridge Preliminary English Test, number two. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. There are seven questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and put a tick in the box below it. Before we start, here is an example. What's the time? Have you got the time? Yes, it's twenty past three. The first picture is correct, so there is a tick in box A. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. 1. When and where are they meeting? What time are we meeting Jane? At half past seven, outside the restaurant. I told her to wait inside, at a table. I know, but she said she'd prefer to meet us outside. Now listen again. What time are we meeting Jane? At half past seven, outside the restaurant. I told her to wait inside, at a table. I know, but she said she'd prefer to meet us outside. Two. What will Chris get for his birthday? It's Chris's birthday on Friday. What shall we get him? Mm, it's difficult. Tapes, CDs, but he's already got a lot of those. We could get him something to wear. No, let's get him a book on sport. He's really keen on that. Why not? Now listen again. It's Chris's birthday on Friday. What shall we get him? Mm, it's difficult. Tapes, CDs, but he's already got a lot of those. We could get him something to wear. No, let's get him a book on sport. He's really keen on that. Why not? Three. What does Mr. Jones look like? So could you describe Mr. Jones for me, please, madam? Well, he's about 40 years old, bald, with a moustache. He's got large ears and he wears glasses. Now listen again. So could you describe Mr. Jones for me, please, madam? Well, he's about 40 years old, bald, with a moustache. He's got large ears and he wears glasses. Four. Where is he going to plant the tree? Where are you going to plant the tree? By the front door? No, that would be silly. It'll grow too big. I'm going to put it at the back of the garage. When it's grown, it'll give us some shade in the summer. I thought it would be better right at the other end of the lawn. Oh, no. Now listen again. Where are you going to plant the tree? By the front door? No, that would be silly. It'll grow too big. 
I'm going to put it at the back of the garage. When it's grown, it'll give us some shade in the summer. I thought it would be better right at the other end of the lawn. Oh, no. Five. What is the man going to buy? Shall I get some fruit for the picnic? Yes. Can you get some oranges and bananas? I'm not very keen on oranges. How about grapes instead? Well, they're so expensive at the moment. Just get the bananas. Now listen again. Shall I get some fruit for the picnic? Yes. Can you get some oranges and bananas? I'm not very keen on oranges. How about grapes instead? Well, they're so expensive at the moment. Just get the bananas. Six. Which is Gary's room? Look, Gary sent us a postcard of his hotel, and he's put a cross to show us his window. Ah, right in the middle. Yes. He says he wanted a room on the top floor, but the only room available was on the floor below that. Now listen again. Look, Gary sent us a postcard of his hotel, and he's put a cross to show us his window. Ah, right in the middle. Yes. He says he wanted a room on the top floor, but the only room available was on the floor below that. Seven. Which is the best vehicle for the man? Good morning, sir. How can I help you? Well, I'd like to hire a car, please. Something fast and comfortable, with enough room for four adults and a child. Now listen again. Good morning, sir. How can I help you? Well, I'd like to hire a car, please. Something fast and comfortable, with enough room for four adults and a child. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two. Questions eight to thirteen. You will hear a recorded message about an arts festival. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. This is the Arts Festival box office. There is no one here to take your call, but do not hang up as further information follows. The festival begins on the 12th of May and continues to the 28th. There are things happening in several parts of the town itself and outside it. At the Theatre Royal there will be a series of concerts starting with jazz singer Elaine Del Mar on the 12th of May. George Melly brings his own special kind of jazz and fun to the theatre on the 13th of May. On Thursday the 19th of May there is the opera Faust. For classical music fans the Brodsky String Quartet appear on the 23rd of May. There are also concerts at the Corn Exchange. 
for people who prefer dance music, we have the London All Stars Steel Band on Sunday the 15th of May. On Thursday the 19th of May, we welcome back the Viennese Gala Orchestra, who are regular performers at the festival. Finally, also at the Corn Exchange, there will be a series of jazz concerts each Friday at one o'clock. During these lunchtime concerts, a bar will be open for the sale of wine, and we are offering free soft drinks. Sandwiches will also be on sale. Light meals can be bought in the restaurant afterwards. There are various other musical performances in the cathedral, and poetry readings in one of the town's churches. The Film Society has arranged to show a film of Mozart's opera Don Giovanni at the theatre. Our programme has full details. Ickworth House, just outside the town, is joining in the festival as usual. There is a guided walk around Ickworth Park on Sunday the 15th, which will last about two and a half hours. Also, on the 19th of May, we have a special concert of piano music given by Oliver Davis in the beautiful Ickworth Library. The price of tickets includes coffee and biscuits, and you are advised to book early, as this is always especially popular. For more information, send for our festival programme, or visit the box office from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Mondays to Fridays, or 12 to 8 p.m. on Saturdays. Bookings can be made in person, cash, check, or credit card, by post, checks only, or by telephone, credit cards only. We also accept credit card bookings by fax on 0284 706 035. For these bookings, you must use our booking form. Thank you for calling. Now listen again. This is the Arts Festival box office. There is no one here to take your call, but do not hang up as further information follows. The festival begins on the 12th of May and continues to the 28th. There are things happening in several parts of the town itself and outside it. At the Theatre Royal, there will be a series of concerts, starting with jazz singer Elaine Del Mar on the 12th of May. George Melly brings his own special kind of jazz and fun to the theatre on the 13th of May. On Thursday the 19th of May, there is the opera Faust. For classical music fans, the Brodsky String Quartet appear on the 23rd of May. There are also concerts at the Corn Exchange. For people who prefer dance music, we have the London All Stars Steel Band on Sunday the 15th of May. On Thursday the 19th of May, we welcome back the Viennese Gala Orchestra, who are regular performers at the festival. Finally, also at the Corn Exchange, there will be a series of jazz concerts each Friday at one o'clock. During these lunchtime concerts, a bar will be open for the sale of wine, and we are offering free soft drinks. Sandwiches will also be on sale. Light meals can be bought in the restaurant afterwards. There are various other musical performances in the cathedral, and poetry readings in one of the town's churches. The Film Society has arranged to show a film of Mozart's opera Don Giovanni at the theatre. Our programme has full details. Ickworth House, just outside the town, is joining in the festival as usual. 
there is a guided walk around Ickworth Park on Sunday the 15th, which will last about two and a half hours. Also, on the 19th of May, we have a special concert of piano music given by Oliver Davis in the beautiful Ickworth Library. The price of tickets includes coffee and biscuits, and you are advised to book early, as this is always especially popular. For more information, send for our festival programme, or visit the box office from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Mondays to Fridays, or 12 to 8 p.m. on Saturdays. Bookings can be made in person, cash, check, or credit card, by post, checks only, or by telephone, credit cards only. We also accept credit card bookings by fax on 0284 706 035. For these bookings, you must use our booking form. Thank you for calling. That is the end of part two. Now turn to part three, questions 14 to 19. You will hear someone talking on the radio about a language study fair. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part three. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. If you're studying English, the language study fair that's being held this month will certainly interest you. The show is taking place between the 17th and 19th of March at the National Education Centre. It aims to answer all your questions about self-study that's studying by yourself, whatever your level. The Language Study Fair provides a perfect opportunity for you to see, compare and get advice on everything that's available to help you improve the way you study. Over 350 leading producers of educational materials will be present. Come along to this and you won't waste your money in the future on materials that are out of date or books that you just don't need. We've got lots of different things for you to see and hear. There will be stands showing different types of self-study textbooks and talks by educational speakers on the best ways to study by yourself. You'll be able to see the latest furniture available for people who study at home. We're sure you'll also enjoy watching people using the latest computer programs, which can make studying English alone so much easier. This is your chance to make good decisions about what you buy. You can attend the fair between 9.30 and 5 on Thursday and Friday, and from 9.30 to 4 on Saturday. Tickets cost £5 each, or £3 if you're a full-time student. All tickets can be booked by ringing the ticket hotline. The number is 984-7711. Parking can be really difficult around the National Education Centre. However, an all-day space can be booked for only £2.50 per vehicle. So, we look forward to seeing you there. Now listen again. If you're studying English, the language study fair that's being held this month will certainly interest you. 
The show is taking place between the 17th and 19th of March at the National Education Centre. It aims to answer all your questions about self-study, that's studying by yourself, whatever your level. The Language Study Fair provides a perfect opportunity for you to see, compare and get advice on everything that's available to help you improve the way you study. Over 350 leading producers of educational materials will be present. Come along to this and you won't waste your money in the future on materials that are out of date or books that you just don't need. We've got lots of different things for you to see and hear. There will be stands showing different types of self-study textbooks and talks by educational speakers on the best ways to study by yourself. You'll be able to see the latest furniture available for people who study at home. We're sure you'll also enjoy watching people using the latest computer programs, which can make studying English alone so much easier. This is your chance to make good decisions about what you buy. You can attend the fair between 9.30 and 5 on Thursday and Friday and from 9.30 to 4 on Saturday. Tickets cost £5 each or £3 if you're a full-time student. All tickets can be booked by ringing the ticket hotline. The number is 984-7711. Parking can be really difficult around the National Education Centre. However, an all-day space can be booked for only £2.50 per vehicle. So, we look forward to seeing you there. That is the end of Part 3. Now turn to Part 4. Questions 20 to 25. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear a conversation between a girl, Kate, and a boy, George. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, put a tick in the box under A for yes. If it is not correct, put a tick in the box under B for no. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part 4. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. I don't remember much of that lecture. The doctor gave me this medicine for my cough, but I don't like it. It seems to make me awfully sleepy, and I can't follow my lectures. Well, if you don't take it, none of us will be able to follow our lectures. All we'll hear is you coughing. Oh, dear. Do you think I'll annoy everybody? Yes. You could study at home for a couple of days. You know, have some time off until it gets better. Oh, I couldn't do that. I'd miss too much. And I get really uncomfortable when I have a lot of catching up to do. Last year I missed a whole week when I fell off my bike and had that enormous bandage on my hand. It took me ages to do all the work when I came back. Oh, you worry too much. You can work at home. Just get Mr Gray to tell you which parts of the course book we'll be covering and read it yourself at home. All he does is go through the book anyway. You might as well do it yourself. Oh, that's a bit unfair. I think Mr Gray's really nice. He's always willing to stay behind after class if you don't understand something. Being really nice and never in a hurry doesn't make him a good lecturer. Anyway, I think you should look after your health first, and ours. If we sit in that small, hot room with you for the next three days, we'll all have your cough by the end of it. 
Mm, perhaps you're right. I don't care about myself, but I wouldn't like other people to blame me for their illnesses. I have got a bit of a temperature now, too. So maybe I'll go and see Mr Gray after lunch and tell him I won't be at this afternoon's lecture. Or the next two. Come on, you've got to get better. I suppose you're right. Then we can all go out as we planned at the weekend. OK, then. I don't want to miss that. And I do feel ill. Now listen again. I don't remember much of that lecture. The doctor gave me this medicine for my cough, but I don't like it. It seems to make me awfully sleepy, and I can't follow my lectures. Well, if you don't take it, none of us will be able to follow our lectures. All we'll hear is you coughing. Oh, dear. Do you think I'll annoy everybody? Yes. You could study at home for a couple of days. You know, have some time off until it gets better. Oh, I couldn't do that. I'd miss too much. And I get really uncomfortable when I have a lot of catching up to do. Last year I missed a whole week when I fell off my bike and had that enormous bandage on my hand. It took me ages to do all the work when I came back. Oh, you worry too much. You can work at home. Just get Mr Gray to tell you which parts of the course book we'll be covering and read it yourself at home. All he does is go through the book anyway. You might as well do it yourself. Oh, that's a bit unfair. I think Mr Gray's really nice. He's always willing to stay behind after class if you don't understand something. Being really nice and never in a hurry doesn't make him a good lecturer. Anyway, I think you should look after your health first, and ours. If we sit in that small, hot room with you for the next three days, we'll all have your cough by the end of it. Mm, perhaps you're right. I don't care about myself, but I wouldn't like other people to blame me for their illnesses. I have got a bit of a temperature now, too. So maybe I'll go and see Mr Gray after lunch and tell him I won't be at this afternoon's lecture. Or the next two. Come on, you've got to get better. I suppose you're right. Then we can all go out as we planned at the weekend. OK, then. I don't want to miss that. And I do feel ill. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet.